So this is the shading guide I'm referring to. It has, just tells you where the light source is coming from and then it gives you um, a perspective as to where then the shading would fall when you're doing your faces. I'm gonna draw the actual girl from the book, why not? And I am going to do, let's see, I'm gonna do this one because it's actually one of my favorite ways to do shading anyway so I love it so it shows the oh sorry you can't even see that so it shows the light source coming in from this side and then so you'll see like her eye will be shaded in here um, and then it's essentially like her nose ridge and her chin are like creating a little shelf so that my big meaty hand you can't even see that so like on this side opposite everything almost everything will be dark and then like her cheek pops out and that's why there's light on there and then I love the shading on the neck and then again the only this side you see darkness because the eye is so recessed up there and that's why that remains in shadow so fun so this is what I'm doing and I'm gonna actually draw her just like she is in my book. All right, so I'm just using hot press watercolor paper. I'll link to all my supplies in the description box. This is Fabriano, 100% cotton. I like, it's not too cheap, it's not too expensive. It's like smack in the middle, it works great for me. All right, so I'm gonna start by drawing an oval. We going back to basics, my friends. Okay, and then I'm gonna make her a nice pointy chin. And I'm literally following my own drawing. Beautiful part about using my own drawing is I don't need to go seek permission from anyone else to use it. All right, boo boo boo. She has a little cute chin. I'm not drawing very well. You know, that's why they made erasers, right? Yep. And then up we go. And then up we go. And I'm gonna draw her neck in. This is a very straightforward, cute ski girl. Okay, and by the way, this is, holds true for different skin tones too. All you have to do, I think there's like a big to do about darker skin tones, but all you do is just start, I and mean, I've mentioned this before, just start further down the, the, the scale. That's all you do, you just shift your colors. So do, I feel like this is three of the same color. That's two of the same color. The caps are not very, <laughs> they're not very helpful. If you're doing light skin girl, you know, you could grab these three. Medium skin girl, you do this dark skin girls you do this so you just like add um, you just kind of progress down the scale the darker skin you go so don't let that stand in your way of making girls with different shades of skin do, do, do. and it's the same true if you're doing it in color it's the same same rules apply, okay. So I'm gonna put in her little hair. So remember we pick apart, we've done this in all our videos, you pick apart somewhere on the oval and she has this little forward part up here. And then the hair goes across the face, right? In, it goes into the oval center, make sure you're coming into the oval, don't be scared. And then this goes off to the side like this. And then there's always volume, so this is gonna go up and over, over the top, like this. And this will still go over in a top like this. Does not too much because it's in a pony. And then whoop, and down we go. So cute, okay. So that's the hair. So back to the face. So we're gonna do our guidelines. We drop one line down in the center. This is good review for beginners or advanced. I never tire of these guidelines. One guideline across the center to divide this space in half. You're gonna have this and then 
divide that in half again and you have the line for the mouth. All right, eyeballs. Oh, she's got cute eyes on here. I don't know why I'm talking like that. <laughs> No, I do know why, because I always talk to my girls. I get like so into their characters as they appear on the page, and this is no exception. She has these cute ski bootski like fun shape eyes, but I am gonna start with a novel, but bigger than I normally make them. Now you always do make sure you have an eye width in the middle as well. So if you need to draw that middle eyeball, do it. Uh, whimsical eyes are larger. Then realistic eyes, and then her, my, my midline is offline, so I'm kind of adjusting it now. Should be like here. And there's her mouth. So her eyes today are, I'm gonna start down below, and they kind of go whoop. So I'm still meeting like the top of the oval here, and then I'm gonna extend up and over it, and then down, so it's almost like a diagonal line like that, which means this one will be a diagonal line like that. Ooh. And then I'm going to drop this down, meeting up with the bottom of the oval. So you are still using the ovals as a guideline. And then back over here. Whoop. And don't worry if your eyes aren't perfectly matching. No eyes are perfectly matching. These are like a little too cray cray for me. That in the, I don't like the big exaggerated tear duck look. I know that's very popular and I don't tend to care for it so, so much, but each to his own, doesn't matter. Okay, and then there's like an eyelid, an eyelid over here. We can have it coming out up there. We can have her make like, have some fun like cat eye makeup today. And then, And then let's see her oval, I mean her ovals, her irises are pretty big and they sit up. So just the top, she looks like a bitch, right? <laughs> We're gonna have to work on that. Girlfriends, why you look so mean? Why you gotta be so rude? <laughs> she doesn't even have a mouth yet and she looks mean already. You know what, what helps though Oh, she still looks mean. She doesn't even have a face. Oh, that's funny. So mess with the eyebrows. <laughs> Lately, okay, I just have to share this with you. Lately, I know people struggle with like creating faces that have emotion. And lately I've been struggling because my faces have too much emotion. <laughs> and they're not looking that nice. <laughs> I have to show you a sneak peek of something. Okay, I'm going to show you flashes. I'm not supposed to be flashing this to anyone, but I just did a face for another big project that's coming out, and look at her really quick. Isn't she so bitchy looking? She's kind of a bitch. So I'm just saying, I'm like seeing a running theme in my work lately, so I need to work on that. But we're going to help her out, and people ask me, how do you do expressions? And I guess I have one expression going lately, but we will help her out. There's different things that you can do, like the mouth and the eyebrows that offset her otherwise red sting bitch face. Okay. Um, and then her nose is here. So I'm gonna just do like three little, keep the nose like super simple. And then her mouth, now her mouth in my book drawing is very happy. So we'll see if we do like her big smiley face, if that will. I hope her look good, I hope her look nice. I have to, I feel like I have to do it quick because <laughs> I'm, I'm so annoyed that she's so mean. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Hilarious. Oh, see, there we go. And that is another way to do expressions too, guys. Is like, you have to play around with your features. <laughs> she looks ridiculous. Um, all right, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna fine tune her. I can't help it. All right, I'm gonna come in at the eyes a little bit to give her a little bit of a face contour. Quick surgery. <laughs> so funny. So now we, she's a little older because when you get rid of the baby round face, you age your characters. 
I don't know, she's just sassy. All right, that's better than bitchy and it's better than stupid face, which is where she was headed. All right, so yeah, to do expressions on your face, work on, you can tweak two things that will make an immediate impact. One is direction of the eyebrows. Two is if you just upturn these like a little bit, you go from frumpy face to happy face. I know a lot of people struggle with their girls being like dead serious, but you can give them smiles. It's an easy fix. Just upturn, and you can even just upturn their mouths like a little bit. Just erasing all these extraneous marks. Even if you upturn them a teeny bit, it makes a big difference. And I promise we will be getting to the shading part of this. All right, I'm gonna put some tear ducts here and here. Um, this lid can come up to match the other, wah, wrong way. Let's a little, swoop it up a little bit further, and then up, adding a line there. Um, okay, she's less cut crazy. All right, and then we're going to pop some ears. The ears actually go between the eye and the nose line, which I just erased. You know, these are, our, this is my fun fab face. This is not a super serious face. Oh, maybe she's got some like earrings kicking. Hey girl. Oh, see, I'm doing it again. I do that all the time. Sorry, I have to talk to my girls. Hey, how are you? Are you going to the mall later? Oh my God, so gonna be there too. All right, make sure my nieces, Let's dedicate this one to my nieces. Haley and Taylor, this is for you. Now I'm good, they're gonna disown me. Okay, we have a face <laughs> after like a million hours. <laughs> all right, now let's get ready to shade this girlfriend. Okay, we got rid of all our extra lines. Now we're ready to add the a drama. Okay, so first I gotta swatch these markers out because I forget which one is which. There comes 10, I wanna say, in the Tombow's pack. But the, but the gray tone pack, they also have a good skin tone portrait pack. Tombows is, are awesome. But I forget, or maybe you get, I forget how many come in the pack, maybe eight. But I, there's definitely some that go better than others. So I'm gonna just swatch these out. This is the nine, four, five, of oh, the nine, and four, five. And this is the nine, and why do I keep saying nine? Five, five. So then I'm just gonna like pick, because I forget which came in the set. And then that's the lightest one, which is N, not nine, seven, five. You can even do this whole exercise with two colors. Well, that's kind of in the mate, in the middle. And six, five. Um, da, 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 that one's the darkest. And five five. I'm gonna use these ones. So it's N five five six five and seven five. That seems to make the mostest sense. All right, and then wait. Ah, oh, where's my book? I forget the shading pattern. Okay, so we're gonna do the light source is coming from the left. Okay. Now remember, the nose is not. We don't draw the lines for the nose, but the nose is created by the shadows of the face. So. I'm gonna start, some, usually I start with my dark colors, I'm gonna start with my light ones first. So I'm going to, this is the lightest one, like draw in the bridge of the nose. All right, now when I add water, all right, so if you're doing this in Copex, you don't add water, so you're gonna have to fill this in a little bit more rigorously. But basically, I'm following my guidelines that are on my page. So there's like the nose. The light is coming again from this side. So all this should be shaded. Now I'm gonna argue too that this is gonna pop out and be light as well. But this will be shaded. This will definitely be all shaded. And again, I'm just following the guideline. 
There will also be a sh shadow here because the hair is falling. It'll be light. Pocket here. So, boo, 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 boo. this is fun. I've never done like an actual taking the drawing right from my book. It took me so long. I published this almost four years ago. All right. Um, ba, 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 ba. Now, so what happens with these markers when you do a lot of layers is they activate itself. So like these are wet. So when you put wet on wet, that's why, ah, that's why it gets dark. All right. And without further ado, now the chin is funny because there should be like a little ball here. So this one, you can actually make that shadow go this way. Boop, 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 boop. And then the next shadow. It's going to be all this. So boom. All right. So there is like, oh yeah, we're going to do, I forgot this side too. Ooh, and this is, I have to say, this is my favorite and uh, my favorite way to shade. And this is how, oops, it shouldn't be over there really. My bad. Um, this is how I do a lot of my mixed media girls, the shading for that. So this is a genuine one. And so, yeah, so those kind of awkward too dark areas are because I went over it again with a second coat and it is activating itself. All right. So then I take the next one down the line, which is N65. Now, why am I taking another one? Because there's degrees of depth in here, right? Some areas are going to be way darker than others. And it also, and this is where the blending portion comes through. You want to, and this is another thing people struggle, struggle, struggle bus with is that they don't, you know, one is shading and the second one is blending. So using the markers that go in order from light to dark and layering them up helps just to naturally blend these all together. And you'll see what happens when I add the water. So I'm putting these in varying degrees of darkness. And then when you add the water, the water is what's going to blend these all together. So I'm doing the lightest. The lightest area goes in the closest and then the darker area gets smaller and smaller. And it looks awful until you activate it with water. So I'm doing a sh like a sh more shrunk version of the second darkest color. Does that make sense? My areas are getting smaller and smaller. Um, let me see. And the reason that this is mixed media is that because I can never just leave well enough alone and there will also be um, another layer we'll do over it dry with some other things. Okay, and then seven five. Oh no! Wait, well, oh no. I started with NC7. NC. Why do I keep adding weird? The numbering system doesn't make any sense. That's the problem. The numbers are getting lower, but then the things get darker. So confusing. Uh, N55. There we go. So the darkest, darkest shading is going in here. Right, so I'm making my darkest area. The smallest and a little goes a long way with these markers. So just be forewarned. That's all I'm going to do. So I'm just going inside those lines. All right, now is the fun part because we are going to add the water. And if you're doing Copics, no water for you. And if you're doing water soluble, anything else, go get your water and a water brush or use a water brush. That's probably the easiest thing. All right. I kind of like her right as she is. I like she's like cool graphics girl. So I just have a bunch of water and I have my favorite watercolor brushes. These are the only ones I use, which are the something, 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 somethings. These ones, black velvet. All right, and I'm gonna get some water going here and I'm gonna just like run my water over these areas. Now the Tombow's stain pretty well and it also, they behave differently like depending on what paper you're using. So they're not very juicy at the moment and I think it's because this is hot press paper. Okay, 
boop, boop, boop. So this is kind of stained. But this blends them together. Okay. I'm just touching these and I'm kind of like dabbling my brush onto the areas that are being more stubborn. Like move it, ink. Just making sure it gets nice and wet. You can start moving it around. Her cheek circle is getting very small. Waggling that around. Come on, Tombos. Blendy poo. Okay, scribbling here. And so if you get enough water and you wiggle your brush around, you will get a nice gradation from one spot to another. And so you can see too, I'm leaving intentional places white, right? Because that really, that shows the contrast between the light areas and the shaded areas. Again, using the light source cheat sheet on page 55. And I kind of love her already. If you notice too, on this eye, this is a Karen Campbell hack. To make it look like that eyelid is really rounded, make sure your corners are nice and dark. Okay, and that goes on either side. So I'm gonna dry this with a hair dryer and then I'll show you how I'm gonna do the rest of her in Tombos as well. All right, she is all dry. And as you can see, she is totally cool and awesomely shaded, yay! All right, so we have some choices how to finish her up, right? Um, What's cool about the Tombos too is that you don't have to use water. You can use them dry too and then they're just great little markers. And then of course they have this nice bullet tip and then they have the brush tip. So, and it, you can activate them or not. Um, what sometimes what I do is I go, well my final coat will always be permanent and that way you can, if you decide you want to go back and blend, do more layers and blend again, you have that choice without these reactivating. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish her off in the black. Tombo. I'll maybe show you one way to do that. A lot of people have questions about hair highlights. So I will just show you, I guess, one way I would do that. So kind of, I kind of grab, um, this from like, the, I don't know, this is borrowed from like the anime or manga community. They are awesome at leaving these big swaths of like highlighted areas in the hair. So I'm just the same principle as the face when you're doing, you're reserving the blackest areas towards the tips and then you kind of fade lighter as you go and you know I have a whole like notebook filled with just gray drawings um, and then what you can do is like activate it and then you leave that center part as like a big like highlighted region which makes sense to have that like if the well actually if the light source is coming this way which is how we're reading out on her face and this side would not have a shine to it. This would be actually all dark. So this reads really well. And then this side to the pony might have a, like a highlighted area up here, but then not anywhere down here. And so I do, th it's a little bit of a misconception. I've seen a lot where people have like multiple highlighted spots kind of over and over in the hair which is really cute and looks okay but if you're thinking about having it read as a more I don't know just just more correct in terms of what your eye is reading if you do a sort of many 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 eye shine like shines over the place it becomes just like a whimsical stylized look but if you want your piece to kind of read as it would a little bit more definitive, like, like her hair shine, you know, matches her face shadows and it kind of makes sense, 
then I would ease up on having more than one area that is highlighted. If that makes sense. Okay, boo boo boo. So we can do that. And you can even do like fun things like say you want her eyes to look like they have a little bit of value. You can take a little brush. I, just, I love the look of black and white things though. Black and white things. I tend to like my brain turns off when I'm painting and talking at the same time. It's not good. I'm gonna try this one more time and I'm gonna finish this girl with Sharpie. Call it a day. So my favorite, favorite, favorite mixed media pens to use in my projects are without a doubt Posca and Pitt. Um, as long as your surface and layers are dry, you can go into these on any kind of watercolor paper. They are virtually indestructible. I use them on my canvases and everything. Or you can just also the Pink pen Sharpies are awesome. So I also love me some Sharpie, which always pair well with the Tombows, as long, again, as your surface is dry, you are good to go. So I'm just gonna finish this girl up. And um, with, and I think I'm just gonna do Sharpie. I just wanted to bring those to your attention. If you didn't already know, because they're awesome. Oh, so I'm gonna put this into time-lapse and I will see you on Facebook in the Facebook group. I love, 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 love to see what you guys are doing. So if you want to join me on Facebook, that would be amazing. Just search Karen. No, don't search that. Just search Awesome Art School. Um, I'm trying to figure out what pen I should use. Let's see. This is the big one for this. And then for... Remember how I said I can't talk in art? <laughs> really can. If you want to post Instagram, so this is week 10 of, oh, what the hell am I doing? I can't talk in art, it does not work. This is week 10, oh my God. That Look at her, the end of her eyeball. That is not okay. We're just gonna cover that up with some hair. Holy. Jeez, Oli. This is week 10 of the 100 Fun Fab Faces Challenge. It is, we are going strong. So you can add that hashtag if you are on Instagram. So we can all find and follow each other. And then I should probably shut up and pay attention to what I'm doing. Her ear is lost. I need to go sharpie that sucker back in. Where is her ear? Where are you, ear? Sorry, I lost you. Oh my god, her earring is completely lost. I think it's over here somewhere. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. So, if you have any questions about shading. Oh, she's so cute about shading or blending, please let me know. I will also be doing, oh, I also have more guest peoples coming up to teach with us. Jenny Mano is coming up. She is amazeballs. And I have a few other guest teachers coming up as well, collaborations. And yeah. I am having an absolute blast with this challenge. Don't forget to subscribe so you can come back and do more tutorials with myself and the rest of the people in this amazing space. You can even see your teeth, that'd be funny. I look like I need to get some shading on there. You can just Add some shading. I don't know 
what this little weird spot is. If you see any weird spots, just activate it with water. You can usually kind of dissolve it a little bit. And you can layer and layer, layer over and over again if you want to. Just make sure always that your layers are dry before you go diving in with a marker because you will kill your marker in about two seconds and that would be seriously sucky. Um, I'm gonna scroll, I'm gonna dry here and just doodle a little more and then we'll call her an egg. playing along in the 100 fun fab faces challenge this is week 10 so every week I am giving you a new how to draw face tutorial focusing on a new technique and if you want to go see the other tutorials that are in this series just check the playlist out in the description box below and if you want to download that shading guide again you can see that information in the description box as well. And you can find your own copies of How to Draw Fun Fab Faces on Amazon and uh, wherever books are sold. If you wanna make sure you don't miss any of the new weekly tutorials, just make sure you hit the red subscribe button and the bell to get notifications and you'll get an email every week when new videos come out. Thanks for drawing with me guys, bye.